Hello, it is I, Potato Man 169, and here, today, I will be talking about the Boxer Rebellion. As you have noticed, my background is slightly different from before. That is because I moved s about 10 feet uh, away from my bedroom, as I have much better natural light coming from the window, but there is the slight drawback of cars and buses and other forms of transportation really, really annoying. Not the sound, you know, it's a bit of a pain. But anyway, in keeping with rebellious thingies that we've been going through lately, I'm going to be talking about the 1900 to 1901 Boxer Rebellion in China. So, by the time of the Boxer Rebellion, the Qing Dynasty of China had suffered a few setbacks, including the loss of the Opium Wars, and various populist rebellions, and the Sino-Japanese War. And although China fought very hard to resist the various foreign interventions from these conflicts, it lacked a modernized military and, you know, suffered humongous casualties. But the casualties weren't the worst part for China, because the West, various Western powers, including Germany, Britain, France, uh, Russia, and the US, as well as Japan, had enormous political and military and economic influence throughout China. And as a, as a sort of result of these various foreign interventions, some secret society started to emerge. One of them was the Society of the Righteous and Harmonious Fists. And they engaged in various uh, fi uh, physical exercises because they thought it would help them be impervious to bullets. And because of the tactics, you know, various Westerners started saying that they were boxers, hence the term box rebellion. Now, you might be asking, but it's insane. Doing those sorts of martial arts won't, won't make you impervious to bullets. And you're right, it didn't make them impervious to bullets. At all. But it m radicalized a lot of angry, angry, angry people who are who felt that their, sometimes rightly, sometimes not right so rightly, felt that their poor standards of living were the result of foreign intervention and foreign influence as well. So these boxers, they went and started burning down churches, uh, attacking railway lines, killing Chinese Christians, just any some symbol that would be considered uh, of foreign intervention, until eventually it all came to a lovely, lovely powder keg in 1900. In June 20th of 1900, various Chinese boxers and other Chinese rebels uh, were able to storm Beijing, then known as Peking, and pushed most of the Chinese Christians or the uh, foreigners into the foreign district with many of the embassies and besieged the area. The day after the foreign district was being besieged, the Chinese Empress uh, Qing... Uh, sorry. The day after the foreign district in Peking or Beijing was besieged, Qing Empress Dowager uh, Zi Huzi, I probably pronounced that terribly wrong, declared war on all foreign nations that had diplomatic ties with China. On August 14th of 1900, the rebellion was crushed by an international coalition force of approximately 20,000 troops. These troops were fighting through northern China in order to get to Beijing and were being consistently delayed by various, you know, rail problems that were being, that had been sabotaged. And these, well, now these 20,000 troops came from a large, from about eight nations, including Austria-Hungary, Germany, France, Russia, the US, the UK, 
Italy and Japan. And they rescued the various foreigners and Chinese Christians being besieged in the foreign district. And were even able to capture the forbidden palace from the Empress. Despite this, the Boxer Rebellion was only formally ended with the signing of the Boxer Protocol on September, on the 7th of September, 1901. Now, because of this treaty, any forts protecting Beijing were destroyed. Boxer and Chinese government officials involved in the uprising were punished. Foreign legations were permitted to station troops in Beijing. And China was prohibited from importing arms for a couple of years and agreed to pay approximately 330 million USD in reparations to the foreign nations that were involved. Now, this was a huge blow to both China and the Qing dynasty. And while eventually the various nations were willing to pay back the money in exchange for you know, them building certain things, like a university, the US wouldn't only agree to give back their share of the money if they built a university in Beijing, the Qing dynasty was forever and irreparably damaged. And this was an old dynasty. This is started in 1644. And after 1911, just 10 years later, after the Boxer Rebellion officially ended, the Qing dynasty was ousted by a giant, by a rebellion, and China became a republic in 1912. And then a communist regime in 1949. Well, that was the Boxer Rebellion. And please like, subscribe, and share. And again, comment if you want me to talk about another historical era, because I will run out of ideas of what to talk about soon enough. Thank you. I jump around. Well, I jump around.